Immerse yourself in the profound insights offered by Father Chuck Belmonte as he delves into daily reflections on various gospel passages from the Bible. The Holy Mass deepens our personal relationship with God, March 7, Thursday. Christ instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist, the center of liturgy, within the ritual Jewish supper of Passover on Holy Thursday. The oldest account of the Last Supper is given by St. Paul, CF 1 Cor 11, 23, 29, and was written at Ephesus in either A.D. 55 or 56. In the narrative, the command is given to the apostles and implicitly to their successors to celebrate the Eucharist until the day when Christ returns in the full glory of his second coming. The Acts of the Apostles and the Epistles of St. Paul describe the primitive community as already devoted to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, Acts 2.42. Prayers and the breaking of bread constituted the liturgy of the earliest Mass. Basically, it used the Jewish ritual of religious gatherings to the prayers and readings inherited from the synagogue. It added the Eucharist, the work of salvation realized by Christ. The didact or doctrine of the apostles, a valuable short treatise from the first half of the second century, gives evidence of a real meal a love feast or agape connected with the celebration of the Eucharist. The connection between the Eucharistic celebration and the agape did not continue for long. It still existed at Corinth in the time of St. Paul. There the faithful brought provisions to the supper, but did not always share them in common to the apostles' great chagrin. The agape was soon relegated to a position of secondary importance before it disappeared altogether. At that time, the term Eucharist had replaced the terms the Lord's Supper and breaking of bread. The term Eucharist means thanksgiving and takes its name from the prayer of consecration pronounced by the main celebrant, the early Christians knew that they were not merely attending the Mass. They were participating in it, offering Christ's sacrifice together with their bishop and priests. They took an active part, answered the response, said their part aloud in chorus, contributed gifts, answered the celebrant's invitation, gave the kiss of peace, and when the celebrant ended the consecration, they all responded in a solemn Amen of assent. All Christians, even the absent ones, thanks to the deacons, received the Eucharist. We may have asked ourselves at one time or another how we can respond to the greatness of God's love. We may have wanted to see a program for Christian living clearly explained. The answer is easy, and it is within the reach of all the faithful to participate lovingly in the Holy Mass, to learn to deepen our personal relationship with God in the sacrifice that summarizes all that Christ asks of us. Let me remind you of what you have seen on so many occasions, the succession of prayers and actions as they unfold before our eyes at Mass. As we follow them step by step, our Lord may show us aspects of our lives in which each one of us must improve, vices we must conquer, and the kind of brotherly attitude we should develop with regard to all men. I would be delighted to extend an invitation to you once again tomorrow for another insightful reflection on the gospel by Father Belmonte.